Hey, what's up guys? Um, this is Krishna here coming at you with another exciting tutorial on Houdini Dynamic Fracture. Um, what you're watching now is uh, what we're gonna do today. So let's get straight on to it. Okay, so I'm gonna create a file. Or I'm gonna rename it to Fracture. And I'm just, I've got a default um, animation. So I'm just gonna grab that now. Try to find out where it is. Okay, there you go. So it's uh, 48 frames and 60 frames per second this is. Um, so I'm gonna set them all up right now. Okay, there you go, you can see that. So, first thing is for dynamic fracture, uh, we need uh, three elements. Uh, one is the fracture, and the second one is the initial pose, and the third one is the animation itself. So, I'm gonna clamp the fracture just to the first frame, because I'm not gonna be required a fracture any other frame so it'll just be the first fracture uh, sorry it'll just be the first frame we will be fracturing <clears throat> let me just copy this now and create the pose which will again be the first frame only this third one will be the animation itself just to keep it clean, I'm going to rename this to animation, this one to fracture, and this one to pose. Okay. Okay, um, we're going to try and fracture this now. I'm going to put in a scatter and uh, make the force total count to 16 um, oh no actually you know what let me make it 32 because uh, it's not enough points there so add Voronoi fracture and uh, connect the scatter to the center and the actual mesh to the first one I'm just going to visualize pieces here uh, looks good all right, um, but I'm going to kill the color outside of Vernoy fracture. So that's that's the way I I do it. Anyway, so there you go. I'm just trying to find the CD. All right, there you go. All right, cool. Now um, this object here called point deform is the one that's going to do the magic for us um, where the first input connects the fracture the second one is the pose and the third one is the animation I was taught this by the great Stephen Nipping um, I don't know if you've seen his tutorials um, it's uh, called Houdini um, Applied Dynamics and then Houdini Rigids, oh, they are great tutorials. Anyway, I thought I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know about that if you want to check it out. Um, so, I'm just going to connect these three elements here now. And let's, uh, let's just run it and see what happens. Ooh, there you go. We got it now. Fractured animation. Ani animating fractured mesh well, let's, uh, you know what let's just uh, create an exploder view and um, maybe maybe play with it a little bit let's see here 0.05 scale mm, it's a little too much so I'll make it 0.25 maybe not that 0.2 uh, no 0.1 alright that looks cool just want to see how it looks yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's a great, um, it's a great tool. Point deform. 
It's perfect. Alright, I'm just going to disable the Explorer view because we're not going to use that. Okay, I um, added a spear, a spear and animated it. Um, you can just check it out right now. So, there you go. It just moves along with the hand. So, created that to save some time. So, we're going to create a group. And we're going to call it break one group. And obviously change it to points. Enable bounding regions and set up bounding object points only. Now you'll notice that, yeah, whatever points that come in contact with this bounding box, box will be selected. So the next thing you want to do is uh, put in a solver and yeah, let's dive inside it, create an attribute wrangle just to transform the positions of the previous frame um, from the first input. So uh, just type this expression here and that should do the job. Then create a group again, now connected to the second input. And call it break two underscore group. You can call it whatever you want, you know. And make sure you select uh, points and union with existing and also bounding objects points only. And select the base group to be break one underscore group. And create an output. Just go back out there. All right, we are visualizing. Um, so I'm just going to visualize this by selecting the actual group itself, break two group, just to see if it works. Because the thing is, now if you only had the group selected using bounding box, it won't work. You need the solver to make sure that the group, whatever was selected previously, still is in the group even after the bounding box moves away from there. There you go, it works now. So I just changed the, the entity, the points from primitives. Now it works, you can see. It's great. Okay, cool. Okay, um, I'm going to delete this because it was only for visualization purposes. I'm just going to check it out. All right. Now let's add an assemble to create packed primitives. I'm going to create packed geometry, uncheck create name attribute, and transfer the name attributes. And then attribute wrangle. Um, I'm going to type in i at active equals one, and i at deforming equals one, which we're going to transfer into the solver later. And let's just check. Um, there is no group. The group hasn't been transferred. The group we created. So I'm going to do a group transfer from before the assemble to after the assemble. Yeah. I'm just going to double check if the group points are being transferred. So let's make sure that that is the case. Okay. Yeah, there's one point there in break to group. Yeah, okay, so it is coming through. So that's uh, four there. That's great. I'm going to create another attribute wrangle. This time I'm going to choose the break to group. Copy the I active and I deforming. Yeah, so I choose the uh, break to group and change the deforming to zero. So when it is on in break to group, the deforming will be zero. I'm going to create a null and I'm going to call it rigids out and now we're going to create autodop network by clicking on rbd blue objects so it creates the autodop network and it's all a little messy here now so let's just uh, clean it up
Okay. Yeah, it's uh, pretty messed up, huh? All right. Okay, then constraints moves to the right. Right there. Not this here. So you got to make sure that uh, you've um, selected rigids out before you click on RBD glue objects. But anyway, I'm just going to delete the uh, DOP import node because we don't need that. I'm going to show you later why. All right, I think we got it set up now. <clears throat> so let's just check the glue network itself. Um, oh, okay, that's not good. Um, oh, we, yeah, yeah, we just uh, create, unpack the geometry because we packed it and we'll make sure that it is unpacked. And now you'll see it's uh, much better. So, okay, all right. We're going to create um, the same solver thing for a constraint network. So copy the solver from before and paste it. <clears throat> and connect the first input to the bottom of the constraint network. And leave the second input as it is. And uh, this is to delete the, the glue network. So all you got to do is change the group name and uh, take out the base group completely and let's visualize this now hopefully it'll work so we want to select break 3 group and, uh, also let's uh, promote the group to primitives from points because if you remember it was points before we, uh, we have to work in primitives when it comes to glue network. So I'm just going to run this through. Um, okay, it's uh, not deleting. All right, let's let's see what's what's going on here. I'm just going to run this through now. Um, all right, it's definitely not deleting. Right, something's happening. Let's uh, check inside the solver. Um, we'll promote is fine inside the solver. Just want to see if the points are transferring. This is all good. Oh, I can see. Um, all right, that is transferring. So let's see on the outside what's going on. Oh, now okay. All right, now it's working. Yeah, sometimes Houdini, you gotta move in and out to get it to work I guess um, but anyway it's working now you can see um, the glue network is um, being deleted it's for visualization purposes only anyway so I'm just gonna maybe you know what I'm gonna call this uh, visualize but yeah you want to make sure that you connect um, after the group promote, promote back in constraints I'm gonna rename this to visualize Okay. Okay, this uh, is the last part now. So <clears throat> we're done with the fracture. Oh. Um, all right, it's not disappearing. So I'm going to reopen this file again. Okay, now it's disappeared. Sometimes it happens with Houdini. Now we're done with the fracture. We're going into the Autodop network. Here you see the SOP path. Now I want to change it. If you remember, I removed the um, DOP import before. Anyway, so I'm just going to set up this node structure properly. Right, okay. Um, what I'm doing right now here is that I'm cutting it off from the rigid body solver because I'm going to create a multi solver instead, which works better. So I'm connecting the first one to the fracture itself and the second one to the rigid body solver and connect it to gravity. We don't have a ground plane, so, so I'm just going to move this around. Yeah, just going to enter a ground plane now. 
and connect it to merge and make sure it's mutual just gonna move this up right so now you can see that it is moving which which is pretty good let's go into the um, constraint network create an attribute wrangle And bring in the group we created outside and we want to say broken group is one if it's um, break three group and set it to uh, primitives and finally set it to the output now the um, constraint network should break enable overwrite attributes delete animated because we're not we're not in need of that <coughs> the fracture and I think that's that's about it really so let's go I'm gonna run this through now let's see what happens yeah there you go it works all right pretty cool huh Super. Okay. Okay. Here is the beauty um, of Houdini. Now it's all procedural because of that. I'm going to go back and uh, change the number of scatter points in the original fracture, so we can get more fra fracture points. So yeah, that looks uh, that looks okay. I'm just checking it out just to make sure. Okay, so I'm just going to go in there and increase the scatter. <coughs> Excuse me. To 256. It's going to run through now, and we got it. Let's see how that looks. It is taking a little bit of time. So I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to come back when it's ready. Okay, it's ready now. So let's have a look at this. There you go. Doesn't it look sweet? Super. All right. Okay, so that's it. It's um, it's the dynamic fracture in Houdini. Well, you know, just to say that there are a million ways of doing this in Houdini. Um, but this is my way and if it helps um, please like and subscribe and if you have a better way of doing it please let me know I can learn from it also so stay tuned I may be doing more tutorials on stuff like this um, obviously it's, uh, it's it's great thank you for watching bye